We are delighted to be here with the University of Illinois Magic Wheat Lady. Jessica Rikoski uh, has really drawn a lot of interest in the wheat breeding program here at the university and in wheat production around the state. And congratulations to 100 plus bushel estimated yield for the state. You've done all of this in a short period of time. Well, it's, I can't take the credit for all that. Uh, you know, I just go around and count the tillers and, and the spikelets and I help them crunch the numbers, but um, it's really the growers that, are, that are, have to take all the credit for that. But there's, there has been really uh, just a, a, a renaissance of wheat interest in Illinois. Do you know why that is? Well, I think it's just the past few years we've had really, really good yields, and then we had some higher uh, wheat prices in there that have helped. And then there's been um, some incentives for, you know, crop insurance has become friendlier to wheat soybean double cropping in more parts of the state. And I think those are the real main reasons. I'd like to say I take the credit because as soon as I got here to the University of Illinois about five years ago is when we started on this upward trend. Well, I think we'll we'll just we'll just attribute it all to Jessica. This year's uh, this year's wheat crop. How is it? You 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 had a great tour a few days ago. Uh, what would you say? Uh, uh, how would you assess the the 24 Illinois wheat crop? So what we saw on the tour was everything looks as good or better than last year, with the exception that we have more disease, more fusarium head blight. So we had predicted based on the counting tillers and spikelets on each of the heads, that the yield would be better than last year and that it would be on average uh, 100 plus bushels per acre. But we know that there is some you know, potential to have to lose some of that yield due to the disease uh, if the grains don't fill as much as we expect them to. So that is the one thing that we're a little being cautiously optimistic, but I think we, we will still see high yields because of what we saw, you know, the good tillering, good head size, big, lot, lots of kernels per head, so. Now, as those heads start to, to ripen, is there anything that folks should be doing to uh, 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 lock in that yield or enhance it or prevent problems for next year? I'd say the main thing at this point is harvesting it on time um, and as, you know, basically as soon as, as possible, not letting anything um, happen to the grain, not letting it get rained on, just being really vigilant to know, be right there when the day that it's ready to harvest, harvest it that day. So that's about the best thing that you can do yeah. at this point. Yeah. Okay. Get everything, get the combine out now, because I don't know how many times I've heard people say, I'd be harvest. oh, I, I can't harvest my wheat yet because my combine's broken, or, and it's like, do that now, do that right now. I know you're probably planting corn and soybeans, but as soon as you're done with that, check the combine. All right, now, if somebody gets really interested with what you have achieved in some a lot of great new varieties, and they're interested in the, the good yields that we've had, interested in prices, what should, how should they start preparing for a 25 crop that they may not have had before? Um, so I would say look at the variety testing data. You know, University of Illinois puts out official state variety testing results where you can look at varieties across a bunch of different companies and actually compare their yields as well as scab resistance and, and other traits. And it would be a good good to get ahead of that and start looking at that those results um, to see make decisions on you know what varieties to plant. Now you have a, taken a, a crew out. To, uh, of, of observers here at the University of Illinois test plots uh, in the South Farms, and you've got uh, some interesting research you're doing. You've got your own research, you've got research you're doing for uh, seed companies, you've got research that you're cooperating with other universities. This is all, this takes a lot of work, but mm -hmm. apparently it results in a lot of uh, productivity. Yeah, so we see um, from our own program half a bushel per acre increase in yield just just due to genetics alone. At the same time, we're keeping the days to maturity um, the same or even slightly earlier throughout the years. So, and we're increasing uh, scab resistance, reducing the level of vomitoxin um, by about one part per million every 10 years. Okay, you mentioned vomitoxin, so there's not much dawn out there then. Yeah, well, we're reducing it. I mean, it's still, it's still a factor and it's still something we constantly have to breed for, but 
compared to what we what it used to be 10 20 years ago we've made a lot of progress okay and how have you done that how what, is this all in the lab is it mm -hmm. or what so it involves a lot of work all year round you know we do in the winter time we're doing crossing we're selfing generations in the greenhouse but then we a lot of the work most majority of it is out in the field so you know producing seed of all our new experimental lines testing them in you know six different locations um and then yeah I mean, all this you know i'm right here standing next to our scab nurseries we got disease nurseries and taking all the notes on all the taking all the data um we we send things off to labs for genotyping so we we outsource to even other people uh, so it's just a lot of work involved uh, and a lot of constant you know there's no break it's it's a constant thing it's every year um, a lot of different things going on and um, it's exciting you know it's just every year you see something new coming out you see what's coming you see some new exciting lines that are coming you're excited to test them and see the results so it's it's, it's, it's a lot of fun no, I can, I can, I can know, I can see and sense in your excitement. Farmers, I, I know, are the same way because of their advancements in in acreage. One of the things that certainly I know is on your uh, on your checklist for Illinois is getting earlier um, uh, maturity mm -hmm. so that they that wheat can be harvested before soybeans have to go in. Yeah, so we have a couple of different research projects on that. On one hand, we don't want the wheat to um, break its dorm winter dormancy too soon. Um, in other words, we don't want it to joint early. We don't want it to joint too early. That would cause it to be more vulnerable to spring freeze. On the other hand, we want it to mature early. So those things are difficult to achieve, but we know that there's variation in the genetics that you can actually identify varieties that will joint late, but you can still harvest them early. And also different varieties have different, um, they have variation in how fast they dry, how fast they reach that 14% moisture. So we, there's a lot that we can explore to try to get that earlier harvest without sacrificing yield. So what is, what is next on your, on your priority list? For, for somebody who would be looking at one of your trials this next year, mm -hmm. what are you going to say, I'm really happy to present this? Um, just, I'm just ex excited to look at the yield results that we're going to have um, from our yield trials, looking at all the notes that we're taking throughout the season, all the scab data, all that we have a lot of disease pressure this year. So I'm, I'm just excited to see everything and identify some of the best lines that we can um, give them off to send them off to seed companies. All right. Jessica, appreciate it. Jessica Rutkowski, uh, the uh, chief wheat breeder here at the University of Illinois and, and uh, someone who has uh, followed Dr. Norman Borlaug very closely. So you've got a real gem here. I'm Stu Ellis.